sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. We're serving up the best brunch ever for the Today Table. This morning, we're cooking up three cozy dishes that will satisfy anyone on Team Savory or Team Sweet. I'll be making cheesy loaded potato waffles with bacon. And I'll be whipping up a decadent French toast bake with a banana's foster sauce. And I'm making three colorful rainbow smoothie bowls with homemade granola. Whether you're planning a special meal or just want to make the weekends more fun, it's time to build a better brunch. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. When I was a kid, my mom made most of the meals during the week. But on the weekends, my dad took charge of breakfast duty. French toast was his specialty, so I'm getting super nostalgic today with an amped up version of my childhood fave. The Bananas Foster Sauce takes French toast to the next level in this recipe. I mean, who doesn't love a little rum in the morning? But first, let's get started with the luscious custard. I'm going to start by combining all of my dry ingredients. We are going in with one cup of granulated sugar. We are going to add in one teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm also going to be adding in some warming spices. So we have our classic ground cinnamon right here. And then as an optional add-on, I'm also going to be adding in some ground nutmeg and some ground ginger powder. My dad only used cinnamon, but I wanted to give it a little bit of a restaurant quality twist. Next up, we are going to add our wet ingredients. We have heavy cream. This is going to make it super rich and luxurious. We have some whole milk. We'll whisk this on up. We're going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm actually going to crack my eggs into this measuring cup and then I will put them into the large bowl. The reason why is if I accidentally get any shells, I'll be very easily able to remove them. Going to break up all of these yolks and give it a nice whisk. We will add that into our liquid mixture. And this is a standard custard that we've just made here. Okay, so now that our custard is done, we are going to butter our nine by 13 inch baking dish. My favorite way to butter a dish is to actually use a paper towel. It does a really great job of grabbing onto the butter and allowing you to get into all of those nooks and crannies. We are using challah bread today. It just does such a good job of absorbing that custard and it gives you a really creamy French toast that still has a nice crispy exterior. So we have sliced up this challah into one inch thick pieces and we've dried it out. When you dry out your bread, it actually does a better job of absorbing all of the custard. Okay, time to delicately pour our custard over the top of this French toast. And something that I also really like to do is I'll just take these pieces and kind of press them down into the custard, give it a nice custard bath. It's so funny because when I think about the French toast that my dad used to make, super simple. It was white bread, egg, milk, he didn't even measure it. But the best thing was the song that he sang. He used to, <laughs> while he'd be making the French toast, he would sing this song. And I remember it very vividly to this day. It goes, French toasty, French toasty. It's the toasty with the most D. And he would just sing it over and over again. And he'd be like, sing it with me. And we'd be like, French toasty, French toasty. It's the toasty with the most D. Good times. Ah, oh, the good old days to be a kid. 
I like to cover this and pop it into the refrigerator for at least one hour to soak up all of that custardy goodness. Then when I'm ready to bake, I will preheat my oven to 350 degrees, pop this into the oven and cook it for about 40 to 45 minutes. While our French toast is baking up in the oven, I'm gonna get started on our bananas foster sauce. We have three medium ripe bananas and we're just going to peel them. And this is a really fun alternative to maple syrup. And then I like cutting these on a bias. It just looks really elevated when you slice it on an angle. We'll do the same with the rest of these. We're gonna toast them up before we serve them. So we'll turn our heat to low, add in one tablespoon of unsalted butter. Now that our butter is nice and bubbly, we are going to add our bananas into the pan. Toss those in there. We just wanna get some nice caramelization. The butter is also going to flavor those bananas really nicely. And as you can see, they're getting a nice, subtle golden color to them. All right, so we've gotten some of that brown consistency on the bottom here. We are going to transfer these bananas over and we'll get to work on our sauce. This is the fun part. We are going to add in our one stick of butter. We're going to combine it with one cup of brown sugar. Whisk this all together. And what we're looking for here is a nice silky brown sugar sauce. And we want the brown sugar to completely dissolve. It is the moment we've all been waiting for. It is time to flambe. We are adding in a quarter cup of spiced rum to our mixture. Here we go. There we go. Be really careful. And then we are going to turn off the heat. We're going to add in a quarter cup of heavy cream. This is optional. I just like adding a little extra creaminess to our sauce. A pinch of salt to awaken the flavor. <laughs> you guessed it. One teaspoon of vanilla extract and a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. We're gonna whisk this on up. And there you have it, our bananas foster sauce. Stunning! Our French toast is out of the oven, looking gorgeous and golden. I love to let it sit for about 10 minutes before cutting into it because it's super hot. And when I serve this up, I love to take the bananas and just adorn the tops of the French toast with those golden banana pieces. Let's slice into this thing. And then handy dandy fish spatula, really nice and bendy, gets into those nooks and crannies of the pan. We'll lift that out. Look at that. I'm gonna take a little sneak bite. Oh yeah. Check that out. Should we give it a taste? Need a bit of banana. Perfect bite. Cheers. Man, oh man, this is a hug. It is transporting me back to my childhood. I know my dad would love this. You know what? This tastes so good, it makes me want to sing. French toasty, French toasty. It's the toasty with the mosty. Yeah. These crispy potato waffles are packed with tons of flavor, but wouldn't be brunch without the star, 
bacon. So I'm gonna start off by showing y'all my favorite way to make bacon. I'm gonna get a baking tray and then a baking rack. Now I love doing this because you're gonna get all of the bacon fat drippings right here in this pan. But we're not gonna waste the drippings, we're actually gonna use them to cook up the onion and the garlic for later on. Now I'm gonna cook this in the oven for about 13 to 15 minutes at 420 degrees. So next, we are going to mince up some garlic and slice up some onion. We're gonna dice up the onion pretty small because remember, we're gonna fold this into our potato mash batter. Smash up some garlic, mince it up. I'll just mash these up. And when you're making this recipe too, I find that it's easier to use cold ingredients just because whenever we're mixing everything together, <laughs> it's going to hold. That's beautiful. Now I'm going to just grate some cheese. I think cheddar is the way to go for this recipe. Okay, our potatoes are mashed. The cheese is grated, onions and garlic are minced and ready to go, and I smell bacon. Ah. We're gonna take our strips of bacon, place them here, and nice and crispy, and we're gonna use some of the oil. You get the drippings. We're gonna add that to our skillet so we can fry up the onion. We're gonna set our skillet to a medium heat, and while that's heating up, I'm gonna start to chop up the bacon. And mm -hmm. This is the hardest part of the recipe, because you're gonna wanna start eating it. It's so good. Mm. In go the onion and garlic. And yeah, get that nice little sizzle. Now, while that's cooking up, let's begin to bring everything together. I'm gonna add in some eggs. Crack the eggs in there. I'm just gonna break up the yolks just a little bit. And then add in the star crispy bacon. We're gonna fold in a little bit of yogurt. This is some Greek yogurt, our cream factor. It's also gonna boost the protein a little bit as well. Keep stirring those onions. You know, you gotta keep moving when it's brunch time. Multitasking in the kitchen. It is a must. Then I'm also gonna add in some flour, especially because we've added in some wet ingredients. Sprinkle in a little bit of flour. And then in goes the cheese. Pinch of salt. And then some more black pepper. Now, let me show you something. These onions are looking great. Let the onions rest on a paper towel just to drain out some of the excess oil. Great color. There you go. Spread it out. Adding in now the onion and garlic, our flavor to this recipe. Boom. Now let's mix it together the same way that you would a waffle batter. All right, and look at this. This is the way that your batter should look. All this cheesy goodness with bacon and chunks of potato. All right, I'm gonna clean this up and grab my waffle maker. So my waffle iron is preheated to a medium high heat so we get a nice crisp on there. And since it's already nice and hot, I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of avocado oil. Boom. And then in goes our potato batter. Look at this goodness. Mm. Spread it out there. Not too much, not too heavy handed. Pat it down and then mash it. Boom. Spin it. And then just wait. Wait for the goodness to come to life. We are nearing the five minute mark. So we're gonna flip it and build a better brunch. Here we go, one, two, three, open it up. Whoa, and you see all of the crispiness. You see this golden color because that's also the cheese. Oh, the cheese has helped it to get nice and crispy on the outside. Look at that beauty, oh my gosh. All right, let's add our toppings. So I'm gonna top it off with a little bit of Greek yogurt, a little dollop here. Looks kind of like whipped cream, right? Then a little bit of green onion action, 
some leftover bacon. <laughs> Who has leftover bacon in their house? Come on, let's just be real. And then a little bit of cheese. Here we go. Boom. Beautiful. And for the homie in your kitchen, boom. I, I got to get into this and do the hard job and taste it for the internet since you can't be here. You can taste it pretty soon in your own kitchen though. You hear the crunchiness? Look at that. Oh, that potato. Here we go. This is a perfect brunch meal and guess what? It's so filling. I know for certain you will have a better brunch if you make these crispy potato waffles. Brunch is a great way to spend time with family and friends over delicious food. But for me, it's also about posting beautiful food pics on the gram. Today I'm making three nutrient-packed smoothie bowls that are pleasing to the eye and even more pleasing to eat. First up, I'm gonna get started with a crunchy topping, my saffron cardamom granola. So I'm gonna start with my saffron syrup. So the first step is to add equal parts water and sugar. We wanna stir it constantly until the sugar is completely dissolved and it comes to a simmer. And once that sugar is dissolved, we're gonna add in our beautiful saffron threads. Look at that color, it's really starting to get dark and beautiful. Okay, so my saffron syrup is done, so I'm gonna cut the heat. I'm gonna pour my saffron syrup into a mason jar so I can cool it and store it. And as it cools, it's gonna thicken up a bit more. So this is not a traditional granola by any means. So first, we're gonna start with our liquids. We have coconut oil here, and to this, we're gonna add our cooled saffron syrup. Still can't get over the color, gorgeous. And then we also wanna add a pinch of ground cardamom. We're gonna do two pinches for good luck. A pinch of salt and some freshly grated nutmeg. So we're gonna add in all of our dry ingredients for our granola. So first, our rolled oats, our pumpkin seeds, our sliced almonds, and our coconut chips. So you get that all in, along with your chia seeds. And I first like to just give this a toss because I don't want any big clumps once we pour in our liquids. Great. Our beautiful coconut oil and saffron syrup mixture goes in. Make sure to just give it a good whisk so that you don't have separation. So you pour that over. Make sure to get all those beautiful saffron threads. And then you give this a light toss. Okay. And then we wanna pour it onto a parchment lined baking sheet. And then we wanna spread this evenly. If you don't spread it evenly, it's all gonna just bake up into a clump, and the idea is to make sure that it gets nice and crisp. After I take my granola out of the oven, I'm gonna mix in some of my favorite dried fruits, and we wanna do that after it comes out of the oven because we don't want these to burn and we want them to stay juicy. So we have some dates, some dried cherries, and some dried cranberries. All right, let's get our granola into the oven. I'm all set up to make my rainbow smoothie bowls and I'm making three. The first is a mango turmeric smoothie bowl. The second is a dragon fruit rose smoothie bowl. And the third is a blue spirulina banana smoothie bowl. So let's talk about these dragon fruits. As you can see, they are absolutely gorgeous and they come in all different varieties. Yellow, pink, sometimes they're white inside, sometimes they're pink or red inside, sometimes they're gigantic like this one. But don't be intimidated because they're actually quite soft. And she's a beautiful pink one. Look how gorgeous that is. Also, this kind of matches my earrings. I have dragon fruit earrings on. The thing that I love about these smoothie bowls is they all have the same consistent base. So it's actually much easier than they look. 
They all start out with a coconut milk ice cube base. So we want to start with one can of full fat coconut milk. And then we're just going to give it a little whisk. We're going to take our full fat coconut milk and pour it right into the tray. Easy peasy. You want to make sure to fill it to the top. So one can of full fat coconut milk should basically fit into one standard size ice cube tray. It's like it was made for this. And now we're going to pop this into the freezer and freeze overnight until solid. Now I'm going to make my mango turmeric smoothie bowl. So we want to get about one cup of the frozen coconut milk ice cubes into the blender. And now we're going to add one cup of frozen mango. Get that right in. So we're going to add in about half a teaspoon of turmeric. And to this, we're going to actually add, I know this is going to sound weird, but a pinch of black pepper. And then we want to add a little bit of agave. So add that right in. And then a splash of unsweetened plant milk. I'm using oat milk. Just a little splash. And then we blend it up. You may need to scrape down the sides in between to make sure all of the coconut and the mango and everything in there blends together. All right, just looking thick and creamy. So we're gonna pour this into our serving bowl. Look at that texture and color. Beautiful, oh my God. This is making me so hungry. And now we're gonna get started on my second one, which is the dragon fruit rose smoothie bowl. So this starts off with the same base. And then we're gonna add some frozen pink dragon fruit. Look how gorgeous this is. We're gonna add a little bit of rose essence. And then we're gonna get blending. So bright and vibrant. And no artificial food colorings, people. One more little blitz and we're ready to go. How beautiful is this? And now I'm gonna make my third smoothie bowl, my spirulina banana smoothie bowl. Like every other smoothie bowl, we're gonna start with the same base. Next, we're gonna add in a cup of frozen banana. And the star of the show for this smoothie bowl is blue spirulina. So while this may look artificial, it is completely natural. It is vegan and it's actually made from an algae. So it's from under the sea, which is why it's blue. I am so happy with this color. I cannot wait to top off these smoothie bowls. So I have my beautiful saffron cardamom granola here. So we're gonna crack that open and that's gonna be our first topping. I love the complement of the saffron and cardamom with the mango, very Indian-esque, which is fitting for me. Gorgeous. I love these little circles. We used a melon baller to scoop these out. Stunning. And that's it. They literally look like they taste like the rainbow, but I think I really have to go in for the blue spirulina banana one. Oh my God. This is so delicious. I mean, just look at that texture. It's like a pina colada in your mouth, but you're sitting on the beach while drinking that pina colada. Something that we all wanna do. So good. These rainbow smoothie bowls are a winner for any brunch table. Oh,